shadows deepen, we do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made? all creation groaning it is is a new creation coming in is the glory of the Lord to be high within our midst it is is it good that we remind ourselves of Well, we were a little early, but I'm going to say Happy New Year to you. I realize that uh, as you're watching this, we're still a day or a day and a half away from, from getting to New Year's. But let's be honest, 2023 was hard for a lot of people. And as we were doing our Christmas Eve service, we were talking about a weary world rejoices. How much did that resonate for you? How much did you find yourself thinking, 
Yeah, I am weary. It's been a hard year. Now, for some of you, you're going right, like, yeah, no, it's been perfect. Like, everything's been aces. All it's all been great. I win my fantasy football league. My favorite baseball team, of course, is the team that won the World Series, which nobody can even remember now, just a couple months later. And how we get stuck in these places of thinking, yeah, everything's great with revisionist history, but if you're honest, your body will tell you you're tired. And probably it means your soul is tired. So as we think about this past year and we think about how do we then kind of follow up even from our Christmas Eve message about the birth of Jesus and the coming of Jesus and how the weary world rejoiced, And then we go, okay, but what do I do the next week? What's it look like for me to put an end on 2023 and look forward to next year? Well, truthfully, as the clock turns over, it's just another day. It doesn't have to be that significant. But I do think these kinds of moments allow us as humans to reflect a little bit on set periods of time and even some of the seasons of our life. So what's this last year been like for you? Do you find yourself weary? Do you find yourself tired? Do you find yourself going, man, Christmas was a lot of work this year. I know for me, it was a hard year. There were a few months that were really difficult, lost some really close friends. And those things take a toll on you because they don't just happen in a vacuum of one moment of your life. They stack on some of the other moments that are past past parts of our lives. So then what does God want to do for us as we even reflect and look forward? Because I think we have to do both. So as we, as we start thinking about this, I, I was kind of drawn to this idea of going to James 1. And, and, and here's what's really hard about the text around James 1, and you're going to find it once we get into it. It just It's like, count it all joy when trials of all kinds come at you. And you're like, yeah, let me, let me vote no, not it, right? Somebody else, God, you can choose somebody else. But our, our prayer for you, even as we reflect a little bit on last year and this past year, and even as we look at going forward, is that maybe just to allow you a chance to engage with what are you feeling, what are you processing, and where was God in the midst? We're going to finish up our time with Christy leading us to an examine where she's going to make that space for those moments. So let's pray real quick. We're going to dive in. We're just going to spend a few minutes looking at the first part of James and then talk about maybe what is God's invitation for you out of this. So Lord, we just pray that you would come by your spirit. We pray, Lord, that you would make uh, all these moments your moments, Lord, and that God, you would speak to hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you go to James 1, James 1 is it's this letter written to this community of believers. And the, the text of James, I'm not going to spend a ton of time going into context about it, but just know this, things were not going well for the church that James is writing to. It's the Jewish church, and there's all kinds of hardships happening to the Jewish believers. And James, the brother of Jesus, is writing to them in, in a place where they're having to face incredible difficulties. And he challenges them to places of action. But specifically, as he writes on the very first part of James 1, he starts off in in verse 2 and says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. Does anybody, like James as he's writing this, we kind of look back and go, are you kidding, James? Like I'm supposed to go, yay, another trial. Awesome, let's go. Yeah, I just got smacked in the face. Yeah, I feel so much better. I just had a car wreck. Yes, let's go. Just lost a loved one. This feels so hard, God. Yay! No, he's not talking about putting on happiness or pretending like things are all sudden better. He's saying there's something deeper here going on, even in the midst of trials. But man, we've got this broken relationship in our family that's so difficult. 
or I've got this broken relationship with the, my coworker, or I've, or my job has changed, or my career is, is in jeopardy, or I'm not sure what's going to happen with us this next year. I've got a medical condition that, that makes life really hard as I look at next year. So as James invites us into a place of joy, he's not talking about happiness. He's not talking about pretending. He's not talking about acting like everything's okay. He actually is leading us into something deeper. We, when I say we, I say we as, uh, as Americans, but even as humans, we love to avoid pain, right? If we're honest with ourselves, we don't go running towards moments of pain. And then even as we think about this idea of trials and, and what does that look like, those aren't the places of we get excited about those moments. As a matter of fact, I'll just be honest with you, as a, as a pastor who has shared lots of messages of God's hope, these aren't the messages that I get super excited about sharing because people don't want to talk about how difficult life be. They want to know that there's hope for them on the other side. But I'm going to tell you, in the midst of trials, I think God wants to bring hope. In the midst of difficulty, in the midst of reflecting on this past year, God wants to bring hope. So here's the challenge, is that we don't have to do something of our own. We know that God, through His strength, will overcome. In fact, Jesus is really clear in John 16, as He's talking to the Last Supper, and He's telling the disciples, I'm about to go pay the ultimate sacrifice so that all of you will have freedom. He tells the disciples, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So Jesus overcomes, not you and I. We don't have to make something happen. We allow Him to be the source of which we lean into this. So as we go back to James, the transformation process really does involve trials. We need places of difficulty. So the way I would give this analogy is this is the picture of this, is that, is that if, if you wanted to become really good at, at an instrument, you wouldn't, you wouldn't just say, yeah, I'm just going to pick up that guitar or pick up this or grab that set of keys or pick up the, the, the trumpet or the clarinet or the flute and just start playing. Yeah, I would be great at the cello if I just had a cello. No, no. You have to actually practice. And here's this, here's a little secret, by the way, as somebody who used to play guitar, practicing guitar for long periods of time hurts sometimes. Like it actually does, does this thing to your fingers and it's really painful and it creates these calluses over time. And so there is this part of actually becoming good at something requires a little bit of pain. Now you may be going, Mike, that's nothing. You're right. Okay. Ultimately, it's really nothing. But the point is, is that anything we want to be good at also often requires us to go through some difficulty to get there, to put some things into practice. And I will also tell you this, part of human nature is, is that we don't want to lean into those things on our own. But when things become difficult, they challenge us to go, what do we really believe? What do we really stand for? What am I really about? Jesus never promised us an easy life. In fact, he makes it very clear in John or in Luke 14 that there will be a cost to following him. What he does make it clear, though, is he's overcome. That through life with him, that actually the trials give us a chance to lean into our faith at a deeper level. Where it's not just about this world, it's about God's kingdom. So these trials, they come at this idea of for chances for us to grow. And literally, the word for trials here refers to the testing of the character of a thing. In other words, how you, how you test the character of a thing. So when I think about that, I think about when you take a crucible and you put in gold or silver, what they would do is they would, they would heat the crucible up to such a high temperature that all the stuff, all the impurities would come floating to the top and they would clean it all off. It's called the dross. And it would make the pure silver or the pure gold. And there's lots of places in Scripture where it talks about what happens in those moments. And we even sing these beautiful songs, Refiner's Fire, right? Purify my heart. But nobody wants to go through the purification process. This is part of the deal. Now, it doesn't mean that God causes the trials. What it means is, is that God will take the everyday, ordinary, actual things that happen in our broken world to and around us and allow us then to use those moments to help us grow. So that's the invitation here. So what crucible moments are you facing right now? 
Have you tried to escape it or opt out? Has the pressure been too much? Have you tried to short circuit it or rush the process? So for me, as I shared, it's been a hard year of losing some close friends. It's very difficult to have those places where, where, where people are really upset with you, and yet they won't even have a conversation with you about how to work through those things. I've even been processing a lot the loss and the grief of, of you know, this time of year, we always sit back and realize that Christy's father passed away around Christmas time, right after we got married. That my dad's been gone now for the last five years. And, and, and yes, over time, those moments of grief become less, but they still hit you at seasons like this, like seasons around the holiday. So what grief moments, what things are you processing? What's been difficult for you this past year? And can you take those difficult moments and even those places of grief and even those places of loss and even those places maybe that are self-imposed, maybe the things that even God's doing in your own character, in your own life, in your own soul, and go, how can I then lean into that and see what he has for me on the other side? So the scripture goes on to say, the testing produces perseverance so that you may be complete. This is the transformation process. This is the thing that James is talking about when he says, consider it pure joy. Hey, welcome. Welcome to the, the world of humanity where it's hard on all of us. We've all been through difficult places. We've all been through difficult things. What I want to encourage you is that there's something of God's joy that falls on us, though, when we take even these most difficult moments and turn them into, okay, God, what is your invitation in these spaces? What is your invitation now? How do I find you in these moments? And what James is saying is when you do that, when you allow God to work out those, those crucible moments where the, the things come to the surface and, and they get cleared off, that it actually produces something beautiful that is something to be joyful about. So a couple of last thoughts. One, be aware. Be aware of keeping perspective of the, between the internal and the external. Sometimes, it, sometimes things start to work out in our own heart, and sometimes we, we even act out of places that we don't realize. But be really aware of the way that you respond to stuff. There's maybe an invitation of what's going on internally. The other thing is, is I think it's really hard to navigate the crucible alone. I think we need others in our life and on journey with us. Uh, for some, that may be a spiritual director or a counselor or a coach. For some, it's just a member of a small group, being in a small group with others that can walk through life with you. And of course, as, as a church, we have pastors that would be glad to help you process stuff. And then, and then two other things real quick. One is God will use your moments of difficulty when we walk through them well as opportunities to then help others along their journey, but not in a way that we either fix we try to fix others, but in a way that we can be present with others in it. Because we have to be really careful that we don't take our experiences and turn them into a formula for others. Okay? Lastly, I'm going to tell you that I am really excited about what's coming for us in this next year. I'm excited about what God's doing in our church. I have incredible hope for what's happening in our transformation and our, and our family of, of, of Christ and as we live life together. So I want to finish with this, this idea of what is the structure story. I don't know if you've heard me do this before, but if you haven't, there's a, Donald Miller does this really wonderful thing. He's an author, and he does this really wonderful thing where he says, everybody is in the middle of a story. And the all great stories have a structure to the way they're written. And in the, all the great stories, you have, you have the hero or the main character who, who walks through the story. And so... So what I would say is that uh, whether you're a Star Wars fan or not, I'm going to use Star Wars, sorry. And when I mean Star Wars, I mean the 1977 original Star Wars that wasn't episode four yet. They didn't even label that until later. It was Star Wars, okay? So in the original Star Wars movie, there's this hero. The hero is Luke Skywalker. And Luke has this problem. 
And and he and so Donna Miller says all great stories have a main character and then they have the problem. The problem always comes in three parts. It comes in uh, it comes in an internal problem where Luke knows he's made for something more. It comes in an external problem where there are somebody trying to kill Luke, literally trying to kill him because he's got these droids. And then there's an existential bigger picture problem in that Luke realizes he's a part of a much bigger good versus evil moment in the in the galaxy. And so in all great stories, then the hero, after he discovers he has a problem or she discovers she has a problem, they then get a mentor or a guide that comes along. And yes, I know that you want to go to Yoda, but we're not going to Yoda yet. He wasn't in the original movie. In the original movie, it's Obi-Wan. So Obi-Wan comes along as a mentor or a guide and he says, hey, I have a plan for you. And here's how the plan works. I'm going to train you to be a Jedi. And then there's always a moment in all great stories where the hero has to make a choice. And the, and the moment, in case you're not aware for the original Star Wars, and again, if you've not watched this movie, seriously, pause this, go watch the movie and then come back. But if, then the great moment for Luke in the original Star Wars movie is the, the moment where he's in the, he's in the cockpit of the X-Wing fighter and he's about to blow up the Death Star. And he turns his computer off because he hears Obi-Wan's voice say, Use the Force, Luke. And he does. He trusts that, that thing. He trusts that thing that he's been trained in. He destroys, and, and of course, he's the hero, and everything goes absolutely wonderful. And then they made eight more movies to mess it all up. But in that moment, it was perfect. It was perfect, perfect filmmaking. The truth is, is that our stories are very much like this, is that you and I are the heroes of our story. God has invited us. He created us to be the heroes of our story. And, and we know it, right? We walk, look around. It doesn't take much to know there's something internal sometimes messing with us. Maybe for you today, that's, I need to say yes to following Jesus. And if that's you, I just want you to know that that could be God's invitation for you. Maybe it's an external problem where there's something specifically not going well in the circumstances of your life. But the truth is, is that you and I are on a battle of good versus evil. And, and God's inviting us into a, a journey with faith with Him, that we can walk in freedom. And He sends along guides and mentors, and oftentimes those come as other people. But, but Jesus says very clearly, I have sent one to come alongside as your advocate, as your counselor, and that's the Holy Spirit. So God's Spirit is present and available to us today. And God does have a plan for your life. And so maybe the challenge, maybe the invitation for you is, he's making the plan readily available. Are you stepping into it all the way? As I think about what God's calling us to next year as a church, for all the hope and the excitement I have, I just need you to know that ultimately, the way that for Christy and I, we acknowledge and see those things is not in numbers, it's not in metrics, it's not in size. It's in the individual redemption stories we get to hear and be a part of. So why don't you ask God to come in and be a part of a redemption story for you? Turn all the difficulty of this past year and let the Lord have it and lean into the transformation things He wants to do inside of you. We're going to close with a little bit of worship and then Christy's going to come and lead us to an examine. And I pray, I pray, I pray that you would have a great year end in a time of processing and then stepping into the next. God bless. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you and holy there is no one like you there is none beside you over oh, none Oh, 
So what do we do with what Mike has brought, this word of considering it pure joy when we face trials, when we face tribulations, when we actually experience the testing of our faith, and then what that produces in us? It doesn't always feel great, does it? And I want us to actually take a look at the next verse out of this section of scripture, where we're told that if any of us lacks wisdom, you should ask God, 
and he gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Henri Nouwen says one of the tragedies of our life is that we keep forgetting who we are, and we waste a lot of time and energy to prove what doesn't need to be proved. So as we go into this new year, as we consider what's in front of us, I want us to take a few minutes to talk about some practices of how we intentionally come before the Lord, how we recognize His presence in the midst of all of those things probably that you've had come to mind, the trials, the challenges, the places of testing in your faith. And I want us to consider what do we do with those things? Right? So you may have heard of the practice of examine. Typically, examine looks like um, at the end of the day, taking time to pray, to ask God to help you remember your day as if you were almost watching like a film, right? And you're remembering what happened through the day, what your experience was, what perhaps your sinful responses were. And even in those places, being present to the Lord, receiving His forgiveness, and, um, and really just moving on, kind of having a a recap at the end of your day. But another type of examine is one that's called examine of consciousness, where the intent behind that is a little bit different. And what we do in those times is a similar practice of remembering perhaps a certain moment in time or a period of time, but we invite God to show us and to reveal to us His loving presence in the midst of that. So as you consider what this new year will hold, a lot of times people talk about like, oh, I'm going to make these resolutions. I'm going to do these great things. Some of you who love setting goals, it's wonderful. Do that. That's great. Others of you are like, I will do anything but set a goal for the new year. And that's also okay. And I'm not actually advocating for either stance. What I want us to do today is to think about how can we be intentional in our presence with the Lord, in our thinking about the trials and challenges perhaps we've come out of or how we want to respond when we will face those, and then being present to God, where were you in the midst of it? And as we think about that, I just want to bring one one invitation to you that perhaps God is inviting you as you look at the close of this year, at the end of 2023, and we look into what 2024 may hold. Of course, we don't know, right? The what ifs of what's going to come, we have no control over. But we can look back with tenderness, with fondness, maybe even inviting the Lord to come into places we need His healing. And there are lots of places throughout Scripture where God intentionally invites us to remember. As His people, as the Hebrew people, as the Israelites throughout their story, God invited them to remember. So I'm gonna, I want to just bring a couple ideas around this. The word remember itself shows up 450 times in the Old and New Testament, which is really interesting. We see throughout Deuteronomy, especially, there's a lot of places, um, chapter 7, 8, 15, 32 as specific examples, but they're filled with reminders of things that God wants the Israelites to turn their attention to. Some of those include what God did to Pharaoh and to all of Egypt, right? There's also how God led the Israelites to the wilderness through deliverance, and then for 40 years in the wilderness. How did God actually lead them? And He wants them to remember those times. God asked that the Israelites remember that they were slaves who God Himself redeemed, something that's so important in our modern day to remember that Jesus Himself came to bring our salvation and to set us free. And He calls the people, His people, to remember the generations and the days that have come before. So what's really interesting in his invitations is that God does something a little bit different. He calls to our attention the importance of remembering. But also with the Israelites, what we see is that in his calling them to remember, he does it in things like song, and he does it in festivals, and he does it in celebratory times where even though these were very, very difficult experiences that the Israelites had, he's not trying to wound them or make them go back to these places that are really painful for the sake of hurting them. What God wants us to have perspective of as we press into those tender spaces in our lives is His presence and what He did, His action in those places. So we have to remember, though, there are places in our own selves that we mess up the situation, if we're honest, right? Sometimes we hold on to bitterness. Sometimes we refuse to look at the truth of a situation or to even perhaps neglect something that we need to pay some time and attention to. So I just want to invite you, as I've been praying about this, how... How might you in this moment respond to the Lord? What might His invitation be to show you His presence? And we're going to walk through that in a really simple, like 
couple minute exercise so you can experience what an exam might look like. And my personal invitation to you is, might the Lord want you to do this at a greater level? Perhaps he wants you to look and say, boy, I don't want to just look at a day or a moment in time. Lord, I want to consider what your message to me has been over the last year throughout this entire 2023. Maybe it's over the last three years. We've all had a lot happen in our lives in the last three years, right? Or maybe it's a period of time that you would say, actually, God, I want to have a larger perspective and look five years or 10 years. And maybe there are decades in his life that God wants to say, you've made meaning of something. And I want you to grab hold of the meaning I have made. So that said, We're going to take a practice of going through examine really simply, okay? And in his book, Sacred Companions, I also have um, Opening to God, same author, David Benner. He just has some really sweet ways of engaging with practices and with prayer time specifically, and I'm going to walk us through that. But he essentially describes doing an examine as entering into a dialogue with Jesus. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to have a dialogue with Jesus and invite him to reveal himself to us in three steps, okay? Here's the simple steps. We're gonna get ourselves in a place where we can be comfortable, like I am right now, inviting the Lord to come and um, and speak. Then we're going to allow our attention to roam wherever God would, would take it, whether that's a moment in time, whether it's the last year, whether it's literally this morning, whatever it is that God would invite you into. And we're going to specifically pay attention and be present to Where was God for me in that? Where was his loving presence? And then we're just going to pray and we're going to respond to his loving presence and ask him to continue to reveal himself to us. Sounds pretty simple, right? So here's what I want you to do. You might be in a room with many people. You might be in a room by yourself. You might want to come back to this later and practice it. Any of those are just fine. And you can do this in any one of those situations. You can do this in solitude or in community, right? So I'm just going to invite God to come and join us and join you specifically in the space that he has for you. And then we're going to ask him to help us to remember whatever it is that he desires to remember or to bring to mind. And then we're just going to be present with it. Okay. And look, you may be like, this seems a little frou-frou. That's okay. The beauty in this is actually the experience with the Lord and there's no right or wrong way to do it. Let's just see what he has for you to try out today. Okay. So Father, we thank you for your presence with us. Lord, we thank you for this word that encourages us that we, even when we don't feel like God, that we can experience joy in the midst of difficult, difficult situations. God, I thank you that you promise your presence. You promise to um, guide us. God, you promise that if we lack wisdom, you will show up and you will give it to us. So we pray for that now. God, I pray that there will be spaces in our hearts that your divine light comes and just reveals and brings freedom and healing. And in the same way that the Israelites learn to remember in celebration and remember with a heart focused on you, God, would you move on our hearts right now? So get yourself nice and comfortable wherever you are. And I'm just going to invite God to come. We'll take a couple seconds in each step and I'll walk you through it. So don't worry, you can close your eyes, you can whatever you'd like to do, frankly. We're going to settle into a place. And first, I just want you to begin in prayer to recognize that you are here and dwelling in God's presence. So in whatever way that's comfortable for you to just say it out loud or in your heart, God, thank you for your presence with me. Help me to become more aware of your presence with me. So we're just going to settle in for a few seconds and become aware of God with us. Sometimes for me, I know Um, experiencing God's presence will feel like warmth or it'll feel like even deeper breathing or just um, an expression of love, joy that just bubbles up. And in that space, whatever that looks like for you, 
Take a moment to just express your desire to see yourself and to see others in the way that God sees them. And feel free to just pray whatever it is that comes on your heart and on your lips and in your mind. Just feel free to express your desire to God in that. Now take a moment to just allow your attention to be drawn to whatever it is that God may bring to mind now. It might be a particular memory, perhaps as we've been sharing this morning, you're remembering a child that you've felt very wounded by, or perhaps you're remembering actually a time when you asked for wisdom and God showed up. Maybe you're celebrating a memory that He is bringing to mind. So just be present in that space that you would allow the Lord to bring something to mind for you. And we know that we can trust God in these spaces. We know that His plans are good and His heart is good for us. And so we can be present to even the painful things and allow Him to reveal Himself to us in them. And as that happens, as you're remembering, as you're having things come to mind, don't try to control it, don't try to direct it. Simply invite God to bring to mind His view of what He wants to bring to your attention. Noticing the blessings of the day or the moment or the period of time and giving thanks to God for them. Take a moment to just do that now. Pay attention to what's happening physically within you, the movement of your heart, the things that you're experiencing as you remember the people or the situation or the things that are around you. There might be moments where you realize that you represented or experienced something less than what Christ had. Maybe you were dismissive of something, or maybe you just rushed past someone and, and God wants to bring to your attention that. Now, this is not a space to belittle yourself or berate yourself. This is a chance to just be present with the Lord in whatever it is He would bring up. You can take a moment like this to express sorrow. Lord, I'm sorry that I missed the opportunity that you put in front of me. And in that place, not to pick on yourself, but to allow yourself to experience God's grace and mercy and His love and let it just flow through, through you in that moment, in that memory, just walking through that God's presence and mercy for you and for others. Can you experience the depth of the Lord's love for you right now, right there in that space? Are there places where you need to ask forgiveness or extend forgiveness? Where's the Lord with you right now as you're in that space? And as we're in this place, I would just encourage you to ask the Lord, what is the meaning that I've made of this circumstance or event or memory? What is the meaning that I've made? And spend a few, few moments just being present to that. And part of the process of remembering is to 
see how the Lord places us where our place is within His redemption story and how our stories can be used for others' redemption as well. And so I'd like you to take a moment too and ask the Lord, what is, what is His story for you in this? What is His redemptive story? What is the meaning He's made of this situation? And then in this space, we're just going to close by giving thanks. We're going to thank God. And you can pray of your own volition. You can join me in prayer. We're just going to ask for the grace to continue to be open, attentive, and responsive to what God brings to mind where He is. And thank Him for His precious gifts of growing in us endurance and perseverance and those things that lead to great hope in our lives. So Father, I thank you so much for your grace. I thank you so much for those circumstances that take us out of ourselves. And God, that give us new perspective and new understanding of your love, your presence, your divine purpose and your direction. So I pray for each of us that we would be present to you, God. We would be aware of your spirit moving within us, helping us to see your face in the faces of others, Lord, in the reality of our trials and our circumstances. And more than anything, God, we just say thank you for your presence with us. Thank you for your abounding love. Continue to draw near to us and teach us in Jesus' name, amen. So that illustration, just a couple minutes of pressing into whatever it might be, may have um, been uncomfortable. It may have been actually really refreshing. It could be anywhere in between any of those things or far past it on either end. But I do just want to remind you that we are with you on this journey. Our pastors, our small groups, our community, we want to be a part of your journey. And so if there's something even that you're like, oh man, I got to tell someone about how God showed up please share that with us. And I would encourage you as you look at the new year to set aside some time in this practice or another one to intentionally ask the Lord, what is it that you're showing me out of this season that I've come out of and this season that I'm going into and give me your direction and presence in even greater measure. So may you be blessed in the new year and full of awareness that you are so dearly loved. We'll see you soon.